Well, greetings. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. In this tutorial, we're going to continue on with the user form advanced filter multiple criteria. It will be a user form that we'll be able to call from any worksheet without seeing the data and we'll be able to filter any of the data in our data set. We'll be able to do it with all the fields blank or with just part of the information in there. In our previous tutorial, I showed you how to do this at a worksheet level, so I'm not going to go into how all this works, but what I am going to do is show you how to create this user form and then how you can add some VBA code so that you can take what you did in the last lesson and now put it into a user form. Won't be a long tutorial. We'll just clear the data in here and I'll just take one moment to remind you of what we did last time. We had our list which populated our drop down boxes. We had our data in here that we wanted to filter. And then we had our advanced filter that we're running in the criteria. Here was our criteria up here. And remember we said we can filter the data and then we can put in anything we want into here and filter it with some data blank and some there and it will give us the exact information that we want. Now how do we actually do this and take this and put it into a user form? Well, it's very, very simple. We'll still let all the work be done on the worksheet. We'll create a user form. A dynamic named range will be created for here, which we'll look at first. And then we're going to populate our list box from that dynamic named range. We'll send all our text box values from our user form down to here, and we can perform the advanced filter exactly as we have on the worksheet. So the first thing to do is let's have a look at our dynamic named range. I'm just going to show our tabs and commands, and also I think we might at this stage show our headings in formula bar. All right, normally I would hide those things in a finished application. Let's have a look at the named range. So we go to formulas, name manager, and here we have a named range, I'll pull this up here, called filter data. There it is there. It is an offset formula that starts at C9 over here, and any filtered data will be picked up by this. It goes down to 10,000. Now, look, if you're not sure about dynamic named ranges, I'll put this one up on the website, of course, but there's a number of tutorials on my website about how to create dynamic named ranges. They're really great, and you can use them to populate the row source of a list box if you're using a Windows-based uh, version of Microsoft Excel. Okay, so that's the dynamic named range you'll need to put in. You'll need to call it filter data. And we'll close that down. So add that dynamic named range first. Hit Alt and F11 to open the VBA editor and we're going to have a look at what we can do now to create our user form. This is the VBA editor that you'll see. We're going to expand it to full screen and in here I've already created the user form. You need to create a user form just like this in the template that you can download from the website. Now, previously in our uh, tutorial, we had uh, recorded these macros and changed them around so that we could run our advanced filter. Now, we're still going to refer to these, so you'll need to keep them in your module. We won't put them up on the second web article, so you'll need to go to the first article to find them. This is the user form you need to create. How do we do that? Well, it's simply a matter of insert, and then you would choose user form. We put a user form in here, and of course, along with that user form will come our toolbox. And our toolbox will enable us to put in all the controls that we need. So we'd expand our user form, make it bigger. To get the properties from the user form, you'd right click and choose properties, and this is where you'd name your user form over here. You'd call it a name. The name we want it is FRM filter. So now I'm going to take you to the finished user form. Once you know how to put one in, and these are the names of the controls that you must give. I'm just going to delete this, remove user form one. There it is, gone. So now here is our user form. Let's have a look at the things you'll need to do. Now, you're going to need to do exactly as I show, and the, and the names that you give to these controls will have to be exactly if the code is going to work that we're going to give to you. So the user form itself, here it is, the user form itself will need to be called FRM filter. And I've put a caption in there, it says multiple advanced filters. See it up there, up the top? You can put whatever you want. 
We then have a series of labels in here. So we have all these labels. It doesn't matter what you call these, but into the label, we need to type a description. So here's description, category, under the caption, put in the name to represent what the control is about. So we have a label here that we formatted with nice big bold font and a background color. You can do that as well. And then we have small labels that are just descriptive above it. Now, and on top of that, we need to add a text box. The text box is called TXT, lowercase, date start. The next one is a text box, TXT date finish. The next one, TXT company, TXT description, and CBO category. Now, with CBO category, the row source that we need is the named range that we created last time that filled our data validation called category. So make sure you put that in here in the row source. With our tax file number, again, the row source we created in our last tutorial, taxpayers. Put that as the row source for tax number, for CBO tax number. This one is called CBO location, and again, the row source is location, the name we created in the last tutorial. They will populate those three combo boxes with the data from those dynamic named ranges. We then have three command buttons, CMD filter, CMD clear, and CMD close, followed by one list box, which you can make as big or small as you want, that is going to be used to populate with the filtered data. Now, this is the list box in here. If you want, you can put in here, we're going to be clearing this with code and adding it, but you can type in there to start with filter data, that dynamic named range that we created earlier. And we'll be clearing and adding this name as we need to with our code. All right, well, that's about it. That's all you'll need to do. With the list box, don't forget that we want to show more than one row of data. So we want to have a column count that says nine. And if you really want to, you can put in the column widths in here, which would be 20 PT, semicolon, whatever it is, whatever the widths, all the way across here. Okay. All right. Now, having had a look at that, let's have a look at the little bit of code. There's three pieces of code, I think, or four pieces of code that runs this user form. We've got our user form created. We've got all of those dynamic, all of those controls named exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need some code. This is a a sub, it's not a private sub, it's called clear, and all it does is with me, me means this user form, we're clearing all the values in our text boxes and combo boxes. And we're going to we're going to call that in just a moment, because when we click that CMD clear button, we want to call that over here, which is that uh, procedure. We also want to call the procedure that we have here called clear me. Let's get back in there and show you that again. So we're calling clear, clear me, and we're also setting the uh, list box, LST data is the name of that list box, I forgot to mention that earlier, we're setting that row source to zero, or to nothing, I should say, not to zero. All right, the next is CMD close, it just unloads the user form. Now, here's the bit of code that's doing the work for us. This is CMD filter. When we click this, it's going to filter our data. So let's have a look at what this is doing. So the first thing that we're doing here is setting a variable for our worksheet. We've got set, because it's an object, a sheet object, set WS equals sheet two. Now sheet two is the code name for the sheet. See it over here, sheet two, not the sheet name, the tab name, which is filter data. So sheet two, WS equals sheet two. And we'll be referencing that several times in our code. After we do that, we want to run two if statements that just make sure that we I have a proper date typed in those uh, text boxes in the start date and the finish date. Here's the code. If not is date, me text date start, and me text date start greater than nothing, then this is not a proper date. All right, so it has to have a value and it has to be improper for this uh, decision uh, if statement to actually function. We've got to jump this hurdle. If that doesn't happen, if it is not a proper date and there's values in there, then it's going to say this is not a proper date. It's going to clear the value from the text start date and it's going to exit the sub. We're doing exactly the same for the finish date over here. Then all we simply do is transfer the values from the text boxes, whatever is in them, from 
text start date, finish date, company, description, category, tax file number and location. We send those values to the criteria block on the worksheet. Let's have a look at that criteria block. Remember, we're sending the values down to here. So whatever values are in the text box in the user form are going down to here, just like we did on the worksheet when we filtered the data here. Okay, I'll open that up again, sending those values down. Then after we do that, we simply run the advanced filter. The advanced filter that we made last week that's over here in our modules. Here it is here, filter me. So we're just simply running that advanced filter. All right, let's have a look. After that, little bit of information here you need. If there's no values, in other words, if we run the filter and there's nothing that comes up, we're going to have a dynamic named range with nothing in it. Now, if you try and populate the row source of a list box with a dynamic named range with nothing in it, it's going to spit it back at you. So what we're going to do is just run a little conditional if statement here that if C9 value equals nothing, if there's nothing in there, then the list box row source needs to be nothing as well. Message box, no matching data. Else, if that uh, hurdle is not met, if we jump that hurdle, we're going to populate it with list data, which would mean there's values there filtered. And that's basically it. We need to have a little bit of information too in this module over here that says show me. It says FRM filter show. That's the little bit of code that we'll actually call our user form. We would then go over here to our interface sheet, click onto our user form here, to our shape here, choose assign macro, and we would choose show me. And that will mean then that when we call our user form, here it will appear, we can then start to filter the information in here Anything that we like will filter beautifully for us. All right, there you go. It's as easy as that. Now, this is a sample piece of information. You can take this and modify it to suit your own values, your own data, and make some awesome things work for you with Microsoft Excel. Thank you very much for listening. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. I hope you have a really great day and bye for now.